right guys, let's enjoy the adventure. Let me show you this sunrise. Hey guys, how you doing? It's good to see you all again. I hope you're keeping well. So today I brought my full larvae. I've got it all set up. You've seen me do that dozens of times. I got a um, bit of a ground sheet here. That it's just one of my smaller tarps doubled up, maybe ground. And um, my reindeer hide, heavy wool blanket. I also got my wee rocket stove to cook up some good food on and uh, enjoy the night here in the woods. It's a real foggy day at the moment. It's beautiful, but uh, anyway, let's enjoy the adventure.
when the coffee cools down there a little bit. Let's have a chat. So recently I've had a chance to um, watch a few other bushcraft channels and uh, it just uh, chills me out. I mean, it was the one sort of like thing that really got me into filming these trips of mine anyway. You know, I'd, I'd always loved coming out to the woods and practicing with bushcraft and things, but um, the filming aspect was definitely brought on by me watching the likes of Joe Robinette and um, Rune and Swedewood and things like that, you know. They inspired me to come out and film it myself and, you know, join in this YouTube um, thing. And uh, yeah, so anyway, one of the new channels I've been watching, it's not new, he's been around sort of like um, nearly a year, but uh, I've only recently sort of like in the last few months, I don't know, about four months now, I suppose, um, come across him and sort of like started watching him. Um, and it's East Anglia Bushcraft. If you're not following him, fantastic channel. I mean, the guy is just really chilled out. Um, Craig, uh, the fella's name is, and he's just so chilled out, relaxed. He just um, does what he does, and uh, really knowledgeable. He's a really good guy. So uh, head over there and check it out. It's definitely worth checking out. Yeah, so recently I managed to uh, get out and enjoy a different aspect of nature. I love coming out to the woods and I love spending the time out here. But I also love uh, hiking and getting up into like the mountains and hills and things. Gives you a fantastic headspace like that, that open vistas and things. So recently I headed up there with my uh, other half and uh, we went on a hike into the Morn mountain range, which is here in Northern Ireland. And we went up um, a couple mountains, uh, two peaks rather, um, and that was uh, Mealmore, and then followed that by um, going up Sleeve Burner. Uh, fantastic uh, hike, really uh, well worth it, well worth the effort. The headspace it gives you from being out in the open mountains and uh, in actual wilderness, because although I come out to the forest here, it's, um, it's far from like the Canadian uh, wilderness and things, you know, it's only small plots of woodland um, in amongst the UK uh, crowded areas. But um, yeah, the more mountains are totally different though. It's uh, quite a vast sort of wilderness mountain range um, for here anyway in uh, Northern Ireland and the UK. Uh, it's a beautiful spot and uh, yeah. So while I was out the other day exploring uh, some different areas um, down south of Ireland actually, um, I came across some old man's beard. The old man's beard is a fantastic natural medicine, uh, believe it or not. It's called Oosnir. Now that Oosnir um, is a wealth of different uses um, in a medicinal form. 
Now you can tell Usnir when you break it and the inside of the stem is white. Now the Usnir sort of like grows on trees um, in a really oxygen rich healthy area. You need to make sure when you're um, going to use it for medicinal purposes is to make sure you sort of pick off that bit of bark of where it's attached. Um, sometimes when you pull it off, you pull off a little bit of the bark as well. So, you get a wee amount of the ooze near. Make sure about a golf ball size. Whoops. About a golf ball size, like I said, that piece of bark attached to the back of it. Make sure that's off it. Okay, so not that much. Now, a really um, safe use for this is actually as a antiseptic, an antifungal, and a little bit of pain relief. Um, if you steep this, who's near, in some water, it can be cold or warm. Steep it in there for a couple minutes. Okay, just make sure it's down in and you've broken it up. Uh, not break it up fully, but just enough so that the water can get in and around it. Okay, and what this is going to make is uh, what you call a poultice. A uh, uh, poultice is basically. Um, like a wet form of this ooze near where it can be applied to a wound. Uh, I wouldn't go putting it on an open wound, however, if you've got like a sting um, or a bite or you know um, a painful joint or something, I've recently been getting like tennis elbow. Um, and it's been really sort of sore down through here. I've been applying poultices just to the elbow and it um, basically you know, takes away the pain. You need to hold it there for a little while, um, but it will sort of like um, take away the pain. Once you've got that good and soaked and it's been um, in the water for a wee while, okay, you make sure you've got that nice and wet. And then you can apply it to the wound. You just hold it there for a few minutes and it will take the pain away. It will actually really um, help cleanse the area and um, it's fantastic um, natural remedy. It's been used for thousands of years um, in traditional medicine. Um, however, you know, these days, the acid from the Usnir is used in lots of um, beauty products and like shampoos and things like that. Uh, but um, yeah, so once you've held it there for a good while, uh, that area will um, sort of become not numb, but it will sort of like take any kind of like um, pain and stinging away from that area. I found that if I hold it there and I get it, I wrap it in some cloth. Um, not too much, so you just have a thin layer of um, like cotton and another thin layer over the top, wrap it in, hold it there and the, the moisture will penetrate through and um, will help sort of like take away that pain. So Usnir, it's a fantastic, fantastic remedy. Only harvest this in small amounts though. So. Um, in the enriched environments where they grow, they're actually relatively rare these days. So, when you're harvesting this, don't strip an entire tree. Don't strip the entire area. Just pick bits off of different trees around the area to allow it to still grow and uh, replenish and uh, not harm the environment. The other great use for this is you brew it into a tea. And in a tea, it'll actually help your um, 
inside if you've got like any kind of you know, bowel issues or um, upset sort of tummy or uh, urinary infections and things like that um, it's fantastic for them it's also great for your upper respiratory tract um, which is you know, fantastic in this day and age with like the likes of COVID and um, the colds and things like that it's actually um, a really powerful antibiotic um, though not as a general um, like penicillin so yeah who's near and uh, who's near tea it's not the nicest tasting it's uh, definitely sort of like suggest um, like some honey or something like that just to sweeten the taste and make it a bit nicer but um, it is uh, it's definitely a nice safe um, forageable and it's uh, good for you
in the meanwhile. Oh, if I can find it. Got some leftover sweets from uh, Halloween. Well, the trick or treaters didn't pick up. A bit of sugar. This should be banging. Any luck? This is supposed to be this really nice wrap thing that like you toast it either side, it's sealed up, you cut it in half and everything, but I think it's gonna fall apart on me. I think this is gonna be a eat it with a knife and fork almost. So let's have a go. It's supposed to melt all the cheese. <laughs> oh well. You look at these TikTok things and you think, yeah, no worries, easy. Maybe I shouldn't use quite so chunky of burgers, but I'm not complaining. It still looks pretty good to me. Hmm. Oh man, that's good. Really good. Yeah, I think the burgers are too thick and it didn't wrap over enough. But, okay. Live and learn. Starting to rain. If it don't go completely, chuck it down. Oh, 
Ik doe het vol, maar. Kom maar eens al op. Ik denk I'm going to go for a walk. Have a bit of a wander around the forest. And uh, see what we find. Still find litter even in the areas where you don't think many people come. Pretty cool, you can still see the lava and the camp and the fire going, even from back here. So many mushrooms about this time of year. Litter everywhere. Well, that's the rain on guys. I just uh, flicked this corner up, strapped up to a tree behind uh, you guys there, just to get out of the rain. But uh, the lava really is a fantastic shelter. I do love the lava. In case there's any uh, lava lovers out there, I wonder if, I don't know if you guys can see my face properly. Is that better? You can probably see me a bit better now. Yeah, in case there's any uh, larvae lovers out there, there's um, some fantastic groups on uh, on Facebook. A great group of guys that run it. Um, the Larv Larvae International... Oh, I don't know. Worldwide Larvae Owners. I can't remember exactly the sort of title, but anyway, there's a big larvae group there. Uh, there's two. Um, I'll link the. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below, and then you guys can check it out if you uh, love your larvies, if you're not already over there. But um, yeah, sound of the rain's gorgeous. relax for a little bit and just lay down.
Hey guys, so I've made a bit of a mistake. I um, captured my night footage uh, all in slow motion. It was so dark I didn't realise my uh, camera was in slow-mo and um, I haven't got any sound. So, um, I will show you the footage and uh, we'll put a bit of music on and you can watch how I make um, some bushcraft candlesticks and cook up some s'mores. I use um, some giant American marshmallows which I picked up which are absolutely amazing and um, I also had some digestive biscuits as uh, as I was explaining when I was uh, recording unfortunately um, can't seem to get the graham crackers over here in the UK or not anywhere that I've been able to find but uh, the digestives make a fantastic alternative. They're great things. As for the candlesticks, I literally uh, get some of the sticks that I was using for my grill and I split them and feed some birch bark in them and uh, you can see how I sort of like pull it tight around the candlestick and it holds nicely. And then I can just light the candle and uh, we're away. But um, yeah, it's a simple method, but it works really, really well. It's definitely worth giving a go. Anyway, I'll see you in the morning. Morning guys, uh, it was a bit of a rough night, got pretty cold actually, and uh, but it's always good, the sort of sun's just about to come up, I'll bang my boots on here and I'll uh, show you uh, what's going on out there, we'll go and check it out together. Beaut. Oh. It's actually like cold now. I can't even see my breath. It was during the night though. 
but really, really cold. I think I need to get the fire going, get the kettle on, make a coffee quickly, and then we'll get packed up and go out of here. Let me show you this sunrise first. Inside the forest is really still dark. Not a great deal of light coming in yet. Probably do these boot laces up before I fall on my backside. Should be enough for what I need. Oh, I haven't much left. That won't take long to boil. Don't put that too far away, I'll sit on that. I might do those, I might pull the lava up. Give you guys a bit more light. Deal with that one in a minute. Oh. Not got anything here for breakfast. Just gonna head out and have breakfast with my other half. But, um, I'm gonna get a quick sneaky coffee. Oh, I think we're good. Yeah. Chaga coffee. In the morning. Not too bad. Not too bad now. Feels like it's warming up already a little bit. The 
八条街冲。Let the coffee steep a minute. So I was reviewing my footage last night after I left you guys and uh, I made a mistake and I shot all of the late night footage where I was here eating my marshmallows and chatting to you guys all in slow-mo so if, uh, if I end up doing voiceover over it and it's a bit odd that's why I apologise. But um Yeah. <coughs> oh, I need this this morning. That's strong, that's nice. That's a nice one, it's real strong. Yeah, um what was I gonna say? Yeah, so last night, it was a bit of a, a, bit of a nightmare really, because I got like a filming light that obviously come, that I sort of like use with the camera for um, late night and everything when it gets dark out here. And um, I was filming away, toasted some uh, marshmallows, made some s'mores, um, as I was saying I can't get hold of graham crackers, but um, so I was using like digestive biscuits over here. And uh, yeah, they were epic, really, really good. I made some candlestick holders, um, just for birch bark. Split the split the branch, feed the birch bark through like real thin birch bark, and then um, that fastens in the candle, which is really handy, really good. Uh, what else was I saying? Yeah, well, that was a question I asked you. I wanted to ask this morning um, was, are you a tent camper or a hammock camper? Personally, I can't deal with a hammock overnight. I'm all right sitting in it and chilling it and stuff, but I get motion sickness, um, and oh, yeah, it just ruins me. Ruins me. I'm all right if I'm driving myself and things, but oh, see if I'm a passenger. That's me. Yeah. So, um, are you a tent camper or are you a hammock camper? Like personally, I love the ground. I love the thing. I love being in a tent or even out under a tarp. Yeah, you know, when I say tent, or ground, because, yeah, tarp comes under that too, you know, in my mind. Yeah, definitely. Um, though I do think I'm gonna be um, digging out the bivy bag and, uh, and, um, oh, and sleeping bag soon. Um, it's starting to get a little bit colder. I could deal with the uh, with the heavy wool blanket, but it's a bit um, a bit brave at times. So I could deal with it, but it's not pleasurable. I wouldn't say it's a pleasurable night's sleep. Yeah. 
any of you ever slept under a wool blanket and just on the ground? No air mattress or anything like that, just the uh, reindeer hide. It's all right. It's comfy enough. It does. It does, certainly does the job. But um, yeah, I'm sure it doesn't come close to the air mattress and sleeping bag and baby bag and all that. <laughs>